All right, everybody, let's go down to the bottom right. We've got Dragon Phoenix Gaming's hero. And in the left side, we've got Sola. Now, Sola did get overwhelmed in that last game to me. Watching Hero's recent PvZs, same with Traps, most of the Protoss players, it feels like the Zergs um, have atrophied in terms of their ability to play against more dynamic and ground-oriented Protoss styles, as opposed to the old Void Ray Turtle. Um, it also feels to me, though, like most Protoss players have atrophied in their ability to transition off. I just make Blink Stalkers and attack, or I just make Stalkers and Zealots and attack. Now, Hero is at the cutting edge of realizing, hey, wait a second. I can use that zealot momentum. I can use that stalker momentum, keep my opponent pinned back, and go to 80 probes and, you know, get up all the tech and add immortals and archons and disruptors and storm and colossus. And just, he really has this great evolution to his splash damage that I think, for instance, Trap was really lacking uh, when it came to the King of Battles tournament, where I think Trap massively was outplaying players like Dark in the early and mid game. And then he was just like, ah, I have to kill you with Stalkers. I'm not allowed to make any other units. And, and I do think he kind of, you know, just gave up big advantages through an unwillingness to transition. I think the one thing players have to just recognize is Roach, Ravager can defend anything if you're just stubborn about trying to force it, right? The thing is, Ravagers are incredibly expensive. They're supply inefficient. Oh my God. Hold that thought. Thank you, Esseltech. I left my sound effects on, but it's worth it. Esseltech with the 10 gifted subs coming in big. Thank you so much for the love. Thank you so, so much. Gonna mute the future alerts and replay them between games, but that one was well-deserved for interrupting my little comment there. Okay, so what I was saying there, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so, so what I was saying there is that definitely uh, forcing basically those expensive Ravages out of the Zerg by posturing aggressively, moving out, looking for a denial on a base, but then transitioning behind it into the counters to those Ravages, the units that really make the Ravages hit their expiry point is key. And I think the big thing a lot of Protoss players have done recently is they've just kept on headbutting into Mass Roach Ravager with Zealot Stalker, a style which Roach Ravager defensively does fantastically against. So it's just one of those things where if you think about theoretically, hey, I'm forcing my opponent to mass kind of early mid game units that won't scale well in the late game. Guess what? Go to the late game. Go to those units. Hero showed us last game how bad those units looked. Even though some lurkers got out, a viper or two got out. Hero is like, yeah, a couple vipers and lurkers ain't going to save you here, mate. Like He just too much roach supply, too much hydro supply, too much swarm host supply. And he just rolled on through it. Once again, he goes for the Phoenix this time, of course, before the Oracle. As uh, that first Oracle didn't do that much. A very quick third, as he loves to do. And good pylon positioning. A lot of Protoss players building them out on these weird diagonals. And remember, the edge of a Nexus, a Hatchery, or a Command Center is curved. It's a circle. So you can't put a pylon there and then put a unit there. It, units can just surround it. There's heaps of edge, uh, edge room on those corners. But if you build a pylon here, put the Adept there, bam, nice tight choke point, just like this. Nice tight choke point. Anywhere in this middle area. You do it on the corner, it's not going to work. Uh, Oracle does dive in with the Phoenix, guys, and he gets three drones. Ah, but he loses the Oracle. Hero getting a bit too fancy there. He should have flown straight north, but those queens cutting off him on the retreat. That means he's got only one Oracle out right now, and he's going Twilight Forge. He's got a few more Adepts, so I think he might try and sneak some Adepts across the map. We'll have to see. Solar, known for his Zergling scouting. That's what he usually uses to ascertain what's going on. He sees a gas on the natural, so he knows it's at least three gases. Doesn't know if there's a fourth or not. More Zergling spotters going out. Recently, Solar's being caught by a lot of Adept timings after this sort of opening because he just doesn't see them leave the base. And uh, he's at 66 supply. Hits a small supply block, but only a very small one. And Queen, Spores, well positioned. Good pullback on the drones. Oracle still does get two kills, but great focus fire by Solar. He says, yeah, you're not, you're not going to do that again. You've taken way too much damage already, man. Lairs on the way. 50 plus workers for Solar. So he is finally taking a small lead. That Oracle's got to get out of there. You cannot be dangerous. Solar would love to kill that Oracle and limit your vision. Adepts are moving out right now. Just clearing up Solar's map vision. A great way to do it. And that's going to force Solar to maybe build a few more Zerglings. For now, he's just staying very low. Overlord Scout sees the quick Robo. The extra gateway is coming in. It is, of course, the same style as last game. Hero's favorite. Now, one of the big weaknesses with this style is a, a six minute timing. If you do like a, a German taxi or something, if you can hit him right on six minutes, charge is not done. And he's just got his gateways coming up, but he hasn't actually made many zealots yet. 
He's only got like a couple of adepts, an oracle, a phoenix. So if you can get over there with a bunch of queens, whether with a queen walk and a hatch cancel, or maybe you just walk four queens across the map. He doesn't really have any air units, right? And no one really does. You could just walk three or four queens across to deal with the oracle and just attack him with Road Ravager Zergling. And he's very vulnerable at this moment in the game. That being said, he does scout a lot. So he sees all these gases and drones coming out. He's pretty sure that Solar's macroing. Solar does now have 66 workers. He's going infestation pit. I do think swarm hosts are amazing, especially against people who don't open blink. And on this map, you can throw it behind the gold minerals. Very hard for the enemy to get to. Lings are going to run in. He's going to focus down the cannon and a couple zealots will warp in. He's going to go after the shield battery, but of course those zealots and probes should be able to defend. Prism in the main gets deflected there. Nice plays by Solar. Zerglings cancelling a cannon, getting a shield battery. Not too bad. Does put down a cannon, but no battery to replace the one that went down. Prism goes back in and takes a lot of damage. Severely weakened for any follow-up. Already lost 50 of his core hit points. Blink is on the way immediately. So he's going to swap into Blink Disruptor off of the charge lot opening. This is the flexibility of Hero Man. He never gets gumped down and stuck in one direction. He's actually going Stalker Colossus even. Interesting. Now he does see the infestation pit only now. And he hasn't seen the hive. So he's got to wonder, Swarm Host? Or are you just going hive for the Lurker Viper? Phoenix and the Oracle Scout sees the gold base. The drones are like, ah, re, there's an oracle here, but he's actually not even turning on his laser beam. He's like, yeah, it's fine. Depth's posturing. He's going to try and take out a few creep tumors, just slow that creep down. Cute way of doing it. I like this play by Hero, man. I'd like to see a fourth base, though. Obviously, Colossus Stalker seems good. It's it's really good um, at picking off some units here and there, but he'll need disruptors to deal with the heavy roach and the hydras and the lurkers. So I'd like to see him swap straight into disruptors. He's still going Colossus. And he's, he doesn't have sentries. He's only got a single sentry. I, I don't like Colossus Z uh, Zealot Stalker up against Mass Roach Ravager. We'll beat it. Soul is teching really hard. So maybe it's just a four Colossus timing all in. And actually, that's probably it, right? It's just going to be raw firepower. He's just going to be like, no, I have four Colossus and I just kill you now. Solar wants to scout. If he sees these Colossus, that might tip him off that this is coming. He's got Vipers that'll be out in time, though. Two Colossus are about to buy. I think he gets the Vipers in time. Changeling doesn't really see much. Zealot cleans that up. He's on 83 workers. Solar's been pretty greedy. Solar needs to just survive right now. He needs to start making lurkers. And if he gets up enough lurkers and vipers and stuff, he'll be good. But he's building a fifth hatchery. He's taking gases. He's building more drones. Solar, this is a very scary push that it's probably going to be pushing out of Hero right now, surely, as these Colossus join the front. Yeah. He's taking a fourth behind it, but that's more of an afterthought. He is going to rally disruptors in behind this. I, I do think Sol is massively in the lead if he stops this push, and he does look pretty well set up. The Vipers should have plenty of energy. They're still gathering it in the back right now, but they've already got a single abduct. they got to get over to the front. they got to get over there. There's Lurkers, though. They don't have the range upgrade yet, but it's going to finish in about 15 seconds, and this Viper does dirt forward a little bit, but seeing the Viper, Hero's got to be warned of this. He's still going to run on forward here, and I think he's going to get all of his Colossus abducted. This is really dangerous from Hero, man. Okay, nice revelation. Okay, Stalkers are going to need to zone, and Solar unable to get the Abducts is a bit of a bummer. He has such a big tech advantage right now, and yet Hero is the one who's getting the Storm ready. He's doing a Zealot run by in the main. He's transferring the Gold Minerals on his fourth, and Hero finding a way to outposition Solar here. Very nicely done. Yes, the Zealots get cleaned up in the main, but this allows him to get position. Oh, Abducts on the balls, but you know what? He kills 13 drones with the disruptor shots and killing one or two drones up on this top base. Not bad. I can't believe those shots got off in time. All the lurkers were trying to shuffle over to the right. This is still only a four base Zerg against a four base Protoss. You're normally happy with that. Sol is going to counter push. Right now he's got nothing on that gold though. These stalkers are like, hey, wait, what? But it's going to get up into your production if you don't watch out. Uh oh, Psystorm is not ready, guys. He's going to try and make Archons, but they are out in the open. They're getting overwhelmed. He was not expecting this. Hero's like, oh, you crazy, dude. And Sol's like, yeah, dude, it's a Roach Hydra Lurker all in. Get wrecked. Stalkers have blinked past. They're trying to do economic damage behind this. The Lurker count is not that high. It looks like some Hydras on the rally are getting cleaned up by the Zealot Colossus. Stalkers behind this as well, doing really well in the production line. More drones have gone down than probes so far. Still a very hard army to deal with for Hero, though, but Hero's scramble is so good. Put him in a chaotic situation, he'll show you how to do it. Disruptors get picked up to get ferried over the Zerglings that are sieging his wall. And he's going to go for these. He doesn't even need to disrupt a shot them. He's going to save it for the Roach Hydra blob. And Hero does lose all of his stalkers on the other side, but not before killing 28 workers. He's going to try and flank this army. Balls! Balls!
balls. Oh, I love it. Very cute balls, but good spready from Solar. Solar should be able to get most of those units out of there. Can he recover, though? He's not droning. He's only on four bases. And yet again, it feels like another Zerg player playing Roach Hydra Lurker Viper up against these Protoss ground styles and just falling behind and getting out positioned and outmaneuvered. And this has been the story so often recently. It feels to me like I'm watching zergs over and over again go for this style and just get out positioned and i think the moment you get those vipers you got to just a move onto the the protoss army it's hard because he had some sentry energy in there some force fields but you got to you got to try to come in and just abduct those colossus take him out force a big fight you know i, I think you've got to use that tech advantage and i think the alternate is is ultras i'd like to see a lot more ling bane ultra play mass ling bane outer players it's hard because hero opens up with the charge zealots though he forces you into heavy roach that's why his style is so smart Double Disruptor Snipe from Solar. Very well done. Solar, of course, coming back, catching a few Stalkers in the middle. These Roaches still microing their hearts out. He's even got a few Lings in the top that are actually killing quite a few probes. Hero, be careful, mate. He does warp some Zealots in the top. These Roaches are at the end of the road, and those Zergings get five probes before the Stalkers do take care of him. These Stalkers on the left side are finally going to go down here. The, the Zerglings going after him, and Hero happy to just kind of give up on that for now. Oh, more probe kills. Solar really doing big probe damage right now. Disruptor drop, because Hero is such a styler. You know he's going to disrupt a drop it. Yep. Does get one Roach with it. The other units clean up the rest of it. Units lost tab is going to be an interesting tail. Slightly ahead in the efficiency for Solar, but he's been down in the income for the most part. Now retaking a fifth base. Do keep in mind, though, income for Hero. Severely curtailed by losing that base. And he's got to spread these workers back over to these bases and all that sort of stuff. Nothing in his wall, but he does have a cannon in each mineral line, so he's a little protected against that. He doesn't have much supply or money free. Zergling's just A moving there. Ooh! The ducks! He gets the prism and a Colossus goes down as well. Nice fight for Solar. Solar might be out microing Hero in these engagements. Disruptor does come out there, as do the units return home. And most of the Zealots survive. So overall, an efficient fight there for Hero. He's on plus two versus plus two. So equal upgrades on both sides. His adrenal gland starts. A few spine crawlers going down in the top of the base. Expecting some Zealot runbys there in the future is Solar. Solar's got up to 13 Lurkers and three Vipers. There's no High Templar with this army right now, which means no feedback protection. The moment those Vipers get the abducts on these disruptors and whatnot, it's going to be really bad for Hero. But he does run two Lurkers in and, and loses them. Balls are going to get yoinked. One, two, do go down. Make it three. And gets a decent ball hit. Another ball hit goes off as well. Feedback goes down, but it looks like the Vipers have already fallen. We've got a Lurker harassing in the top of the base. Two Lurkers here are going to hit that gold base. They unfortunately had been shift-clicked to Siege in the wrong location. But bam, seven more workers just like that. And look at this, he's now going to go south. He says, okay, you have the high ground. This army's going to push your natural while these lurkers are such a struggle for you to deal with. Hero does clean up at least one of those lurkers. Disruptors of Hero trying to buy time. Ling's flooding into the main again. He's going to have to warp in up there. Hero frantically trying to keep up with Solar's harassment. And I think he's once again done just a good enough job. Four zealots do queue in there. Combined with that cannon buying so much time. Looks like he's okay. Do the Zerglings burrow? No, they do not burrow. It was not upgraded in this game. It's just been a bit tight on the cash for Solar. He's broke. Uh-oh. Big Lurker Volley. Does do some big damage. Nice revelation. The Oracle is fantastic there. You can see what looks like an absolute orgy hodgepodge of an army here for Hero, but he's just manually control clicking, tabbing to the right units, all that sort of stuff. Gets two Lurkers there. Not bad. He's going to go for another Lurker. Gets it. So two Lurkers do go down. Or three Lurkers in total, sorry. Lurker Harass still continuing, though. Hero's down to 55 workers. He's lost that economic lead that he had for most of this game. I Templar was looking for feedback there, wasn't able to find it. And this base never got rebuilt, so I think Hero does need to pay attention to his economy, or he might lose in the later stages. Melee Carapace upgrades coming in, so preparing to upgrade the Zerglings. Maybe swap into Ultras would be really nice. There's no Immortals in here, and I think the Ultra tech is one of the things that's being missed by Zergs at the moment. In this meta where no Protoss is building Immortals anymore... Zerg players have forgotten about the Ultralisk and how good it is. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people who say, oh, the uh, player said it's bad. Hassam said it's bad because of this. Guys, no one's building Immortals. If you're playing Neeb, you don't want to be building Ultras. But I really think on a theory level, you're looking at these sort of armies more and more from Protoss players. An Ultralisk switch would absolutely annihilate, especially with like some Fungals. Ooh, it'd be so sick. It's an expensive switch. Solar's pretty broke, so don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this is the best scenario for it. But uh, definitely something that players might be wanting to keep their eyes on more and more. I think we'll see a lot of success when players do start mixing those in. Uh, we'll see, of course, Protoss players learn to adapt to scout for it and counter it. Not saying it's foolproof. Nice. Lurker Nidus comes in. But good dodgies uh, with those Nidus Worms. And 
Gonna need to get an observer out. That's gonna get depowered potentially though. Ooh, okay, Hero is denying gold mining. This base up here is the lifeline of Solar's income. And he's gonna have to recall back and, and just jump on this. But look at that, evacuates most of the lurkers. Very well done here by Solar. And he forces Hero's army out of position. Now, trying to control this mid-ground as well. He's gonna try and reposition there. I love the way he's just using two halves of his army. One half in the Nidus, the other half roaming. Both players have done a good job of splitting up. It's Solo who's saying, hey, lurkers are invisible siege tanks. They're hard for you to deal with. I'm going to keep being cheeky. Cannon goes down in the top left, guys. Four probes already went down in the gold. This base is going to lose all its mining. He does run his probes. Oh, Hero's economy is in shambles. This next fight, he needs to crush this next fight. But look at this. A Dux, an Archon, and a Disruptor go down. Good feedback storms to answer that. One more, though. A Duck does take a Disruptor down. But so do oh, so many units fall. Oh, my God. A lot of Hydras die to the storm. About five Lurkers die to the Disruptors. The problem for Hero is he doesn't have the ability to rebuild. He's kind of got to do it with this army, and that's why he's shoving towards the production. He loses the top right. He's only got a cannon there. The Zerglings, of course, I think not enough to, dip, to beat the cannon and the probes, but uh, he's reinforcing with Zealots, Stalkers, anything across the map. Now, Solar's kind of forced to attack into this army, and that's not great for Solar, especially with the Revelation coming in there. These Disruptor shots are zoning. That one kind of whiffs, though. And if these Disruptors get jumped on, that's really good for Solar. Trying to get inside the main ramp is Hero. But look, Solar's trying to, trying to keep it back. He's trying to get up inside the main. He says, I want to fight you in a bit of a funnel and a bit of a choke point. Disruptor Zealot is still rallying in here. The Roaches and the Hydras are going to try and shove up. They're trying to kill the Disruptor. They don't quite get it. That Disruptor is refilled. It's refilled. He's got to pull back. And as this army comes up this ramp, this Disruptor could land a massive hit. And oh, gets two Lurkers. Does get focused down just after it fires. This is eventually going to get cleaned up. But the Reinforce is clearing out the gold and the Overlords up there. These Stalkers could recall as well. I'd love to see Hero keep escaping with these. Trying to get out of there. He's going to try and kill the spawning pool as much as he can. The Hydras are coming back down the front. Of course, that's all getting cleaned up. Spawning pool goes down to the very last shot. Hero, of course, microing to the last second. But the Vipers are here, guys. And he yoinks that Disruptor right next to itself to cancel its shot. Of course, does break the channel on that. And it looks like Solar here makes the game scrappy. This is the last thing I would suggest as a way to strategically win versus Hero. He is the Chaos Master. Yet Solar has made it messy. He's fought Hero on his terms. And he's outdone him. Nidus's Lurkers, scrappy movement, repositioning all over the place. Solar here with a spectacular display of Zerg versus Protoss. I'm really impressed. This is the sort of fun movement, action-focused game that we've been missing. ZVP has been so much fun recently when we got games like this. Solar fights back. I do still think early, mid-game, he was behind and putting himself behind. But God, he played like just an absolute Chad gamer in the late game. Well done, Solar. Ties up the series one-to-one.